Today I'll talk to you about uh, one patient that I treated recently. It has a lot of interesting clinical implications to it. This is the case of a seven-month-old baby. Uh, baby was born after a lot of efforts because uh, there were fertility issues and by the time uh, this kid could be born, the parents had previously lost two or three uh, babies in utero itself. So this was a kind of precious pregnancy and this baby was born. This girl is around uh, seven months old and she was recently brought to me in an unconscious state in the middle of the night. What had happened was her parents had gone out somewhere with the baby and when they came back, uh, they put the baby on the bed and went about changing their clothes. And that time the kid took a fall and the baby just fell down from that height of maybe uh, one, one and a half feet. Uh, she fell down and she became unconscious for a bit. Though she was crying a little bit excessive for a while again then after a few minutes she was absolutely fine regained complete consciousness but two hour, around two hours after the episode suddenly she started becoming drowsy and then became completely unconscious when she was got to me she was in an unconscious state and her bp was barely recordable we did a CT scan quickly and found a large extradural hematoma. We quickly took her to the OT, evacuated the hematoma. She was unconscious. So evacuation of the hematoma was not enough to quickly bring her back to consciousness, but then gradually she improved. Now there are two interesting clinical phenomena which happened over here. The first was something called as a lucid interval which I've explained in one of my previous videos. So in here what happened was the child took a tumble, became unconscious and then again became conscious. That's a lucid interval. And then again, because of a large hematoma, which developed over a period of time, she was again rendered unconscious. So that was the first phenomenon. Second phenomenon is when the patient was brought in a state of shock or a state where the BP was barely recordable. Normally in an adult, with a, with a head injury, with even the largest of hematoma inside the skull, there would never be hypotension or decrease in the BP because of that clot over there. Even a, even a large clot would not lead to hypotension. So in such cases, in the adults, we would look at the other organs, namely the larger cavities like the chest. If there is a bleeding in the chest, yes, that would lead to a lot of blood loss and can lead to hypotension. Uh, a clot in the abdomen, yes, that could lead to a lot of blood loss and could lead to hypotension. But a clot inside the brain cannot lead to hypotension in the adult. But in a kid, it's an entirely different proposition. If you look at the size of uh, the kid's head vis-a-vis -vis the body, the difference is less than that what we would see in the case of an adult. In the case of any adult, the body is much bigger than the head. So even a small collection of clot in the brain could lead to a significant decrease in the intravascular blood volume. And even that blood clot can lead to the shock phenomena or hypovolemic shock where there is shock because of decrease in the volume of the blood. So if you look at it in this case, there is a third interesting clinical facet. Think about somebody falling from a height of one, one and a half feet. Why should that person have such a large clot inside the brain? Whatever be the reason, it looks rather improbable. So in such cases, we have to think again. Could there be a problem with the patient's blood itself? Could the patient be suffering from some bleeding disorder? Again, when we look at the history of the mother, the mother had three pregnancies which didn't go to term. So there could be some bleeding disorder which was leading, that, uh, leading to that in the first place. So maybe this kid is also suffering from a similar problem. So a hematological opinion from a pediatric hematologist would be extremely useful in such cases. So three things that we've covered over here. The first was the fact that, okay, lucid interval is something that we have to look at. Yes, a patient has been unconscious, becomes conscious and then again becomes unconscious. Yes, that should make us think quick and act quick. That's one. Hypotension in adult 
is never purely because of head injury you have to look at other organs but in a kid could be because of the head injury itself and third thing is trivial fall leading to significant bleeding we need to have a look at the blood itself and think in terms of blood disorders also thank you so much